Hey, join my Discord. Link in the description. Celta Vigo, a club void of any prestigious domestic silverware. Os Celestes have finished no higher than 4th in La Liga and have faced constant heartbreak. But no matter what, it's that undying spirit that keeps them going every year. This is... Afutesa. <laughs> I'm gonna win a pay the front line, take the don'ts. He's coming out again for a new point. Get your bets down, ladies and gentlemen. Four fours to point, mark four. Ace, two, scrap, one, 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 four. Ace, two, ace, ace, two, scrap, grab, one, four. Scrap, one, four. Who wants the, who wants the hard four? Five, one, four. Check me out, y'all. Ruben Blanco. Vigo throughout his professional career, Ruben Blanco has climbed up the ranks to be where he is currently. At 25 years old, he's considered one of the better Spanish talents in goal. He may be no Casillas, but consider him reliable Ruben. Defenders. Lucas Alaza is a great fullback option with his solid defense and an ability to run into the attack with an eye for goal even. The only issue is, he's just alone. On the other hand, we have Hugo Mayo. Being at the club since 1999, facing adversity multiple times, and still managing 350 appearances at 29. His lack of pace is concerning, although I'll trust in our captain for the meantime. The central duo of Nestor Araujo and low knee Jason Murillo will hopefully keep things tight at the back. I say hopefully because FIFA 21 defending is similar to that of the 2010 Metrodome collapse. Keep an eye on 24 year old brute Joseph Ido, who will eventually replace someone in the center. Don't sleep on 19 year old Sergio Carrera. Nothing is certain, but nothing is impossible either for the young right back. Midfielders. Okai Yakushlu for the meantime will be the one midfielder supporting the defensive end. His combo of strength and stamina works in harmony to create a world for opposition in which there is no no escape from Okai. Denis Suarez is the opposite, being the one to progress the ball forward for our multiple attacking options. He's got a good enough vision to try more high risk, high reward type balls, and it'll be interesting to see if we can revitalize that downfall caused by awful management by those lovely directors in the Arsenal board. Make sure you don't forget about the best prospect we have at the club though, Mr. Fran Beltran. 21 years old means this guy could turn out to be a potential superstar. Attackers. Nolito at his peak was fun to watch throughout the early 2010s. And then Man City happened. Here's to hopefully seeing flashes of that brilliance this upcoming season. His partner, Bryce Mendes, is a player I look forward to seeing progress. He'll be a winger for now, but his stats make him seem more fit for a central role. But only time will tell. Up front is a striking duo. I have not much to honestly say about Santi Mina, so let's talk about that man, Iago Aspas. The flashes of beauty in modern football can be seen in Iago Aspas' career. Since moving back to Celta in 2015, he's quickly become the club's all-time leading goalscorer by a country mile. He's a hero to many in Vigo, and I'm hoping in this series I can continue that beautiful legacy. But keep that eye on Iker Lozada. Could we see the next Torres or Villa in this man? Transfers. We sold Kevin for 3 million, he goes out to PSV. Sergio leaves for Preston North End for 1.1 million. Miguel Baisa goes out on low to Elche. Spanish Mateo Guendouzi goes out on loan to Morirense. David Junca, 3 million to Feyenoord. And finally, David Costas goes out on a two year loan to Lyon. Also, look at our youth academy. Look how amazing this wonder kid is. Daniel Maldonado, already 75 rated at age 18, 6'6. Six, six. 5 star everything, just simply incredible. That's cool and all, but this is just a scale future star feature. So, let's just come up with the story and say he's a child predator. Hey, I have merch now, because you guys decided to help me a little bit and suggest some ideas. So here it is now. We got some sick designs like the Sus King, the Squad Pick, and this thing. And more! Go and buy yourself a sticker for the low price of just $1.25 or a shirt if you want. That's a bit more expensive though. Big shout out to my friend Selena for designing these. Be sure to follow any and all of her socials. She's fantastic at what she does and deserves all the praise. Link to the Redbubble store will be in the description below and be sure to send some pictures of the merch you buy if you do actually buy the merch. I, I really don't expect anyone to buy merch.
Manu Sanchez. Ah yes, another career mode series and again the first sighting is a left back. Lucas Salaza is alone and the rest of the depth aren't very convincing. With this new signing, Sanchez at 19 years of age will hopefully give us a bit more hope after Olaza leaves. Can he follow in the footsteps of other Atleti departures like the Hernandez brothers, or will he collapse like Tottenham in the last couple months? Just 3.6 million, a bargain you love to see. Quick note, every signing will have a release clause to match the same realism in Spain. Eduardo Guarezma. <laughs> Come on now, he a. <laughs> <laughs> you really, you really, you're serious. With the fact that most of our center backs this year are on loan, Eduardo is more of a transaction for the future. The 18 year old Portuguese defender already has the potential to reach the moon. Literally. Look at that jumping stat. Don't expect too much in this campaign, but he's definitely one to watch. Six million. Here we go. Luis Sinistera. The Feyenoord winger brings his flair and talents to Vigo, where he will fill in the gaping void that is the future of our left wing. Four star skills, four star weak foot. Oh, and don't forget, mucha velocidad. He's still a developing project, seeing that his shooting and passing stats aren't exactly there just yet. But believe me, when they are, he is going to light up La Liga with some cumbia. 15 million done deal. Well, men, welcome to Celta Vigo. So with this squad, how high is the ceiling now with these new signings? Guess we'll have to find out. First match of the series, and it's a big one, Real Madrid. First chance goes to Real Madrid, it's Tony Cruz carrying the ball, passes it to Ferlan Mendy on the left flank. Ferlan Mendy trying to find someone in the center, brings it back down to Tony Cruz. Now to Eden Hazard on the byline, Eden Hazard then just cuts inside, tries to find some space to take the shot, passes it to Casemiro who then takes the shot. It's a great save by Ruben Blanco. It's Real Madrid again, but Tony Cruz loses the ball to Denis Suarez. Suarez with a lovely pass to Santi Mina, just two defenders covering him, so he brings it down to Luis Sinistera. Sinistera with room to run, as he then just stops, tries to find someone in the middle, can't, so he brings it to Thiago Aspas, now to Denis Suarez, flips it off to Santimina, fake shot, then has a shot himself, and he just misses the net. Madrid go forward, it's Karim Benzema in the center circle, a beautiful lob pass all the way up to Eden Hazard, Hazard with plenty of space to run into as he just crosses this one in for Luka Modric on the end of it, and it's 1-0 to Real Madrid. Not a good start for us, but it is Real Madrid. Right off kickoff though, it's Celta Vigo trying to catch Real Madrid off guard, it's Bryce Mendez on the right flank, he drops it down to Santimina, who just progresses forward, waits for the run of Iago Aspas, a beautiful weighted ball to him, and Iago Aspas takes advantage of that space and makes it 1-0 at the Santiago Bernabeu. Celta Vigo can carry on this momentum. It's Luis Sinistera to Denis Suarez. Suarez then drops it down to Bryce Mendez on the right flank. Then he brings it to Denis Suarez on the edge of the box. Denis Suarez drops it to Okayu Kuslu outside the box and it just hits the crossbar. Pretty unlucky. Celta Vigo continue to progress forward, this time through Bryce Mendez again as he whips this one in. It's Casemiro on the end of it. Falls to Luka Modric. Now to Rodrigo. Rodrigo to Karim Benzema. Great pack pass to Modric. Now an even better pass to Rodrigo. Rodrigo versus Araujo beats him, then passes it to Luka Modric. Great passing play as they just bisect through the Celta Vigo defense, and it's 2 1 to Real Madrid. They find the winner just five minutes before the end of the match. And luckily enough, we escape here with no points. First match at home and it gets a little bit more simpler. Cadiz. Cadiz was actually one of those clubs in the voting list, but you guys did vote for Celta Vigo, so here we are now. But it's Negredo, with absolutely no one disrupting his play. He just has him versus the keeper, but Ruben Blanco saves the day there. Cadiz continue to pull through with another attack. It is once again them just running down the wing with no disruptions. It's Sanchez this time as he crosses it in for Jimenez. Jimenez versus the keeper, and it's again Ruben Blanco making the saves. And there's a block, and finally that chance is over. 17 minutes though, finally it's O Celeste's making their opportunities count. It's Denis Suarez, good ball to Iago Aspas, an even better one to Santi Mina, and Santi Mina finds himself his very first goal of the series, 1-0 to Celta Vigo, just like that. I bet you missed that one. And after that goal, it just seemed like it ignited Oselestes at Santi Mina. He gets dispossessed though. 
Fali on the ball, but then Santi Mina gets it right back. Santi Mina just passes it to Iago Aspas, and it's just way too simple. A mistake capitalized on by Celta Vigo. Iago Aspas has himself another goal, and it's 2-0 to Celta Vigo. Cadiz go forward. It's Jimenez passing it to Negredo, and Negredo, pack pass. It goes right to the Celta Vigo defender, though, and now a transitional counterattack starts. It's Iago Aspas. He lobs it all the way up to Sinistera. Near the death of this match, it's Cadiz with an attack, it's Negredo, header into the net. Unfortunately enough, we do not get a clean sheet, but that is three points. Huesca. Surprisingly enough, Huesca were actually kind of near the top of the table when we played them, but a pretty simple save for Ruben Blanco there. It wasn't until the 39th minute where Celta Vigo finally found some attacks. Denis Suarez with some lovely footwork to find some space around that midfielder, and now Nolito gets a great little piercing pass to Iago Aspas, him versus the keeper, and it's straight at the keeper. O Celeste's progress forward, it's Fran Beltran passing it to Luis Sinistera. Sinistera with plenty of space to run into, what's he gonna do? He just dances around one opposer, then gets a great ball to Iago Aspas, and an even better finish near post, 1-0 to Celta Vigo, just like that. But again, Huesca being the surprise package, being near the top of the table at the moment, it's Musto to Sandro, Sandro off the post. 81 minutes in, an attack starting from the back, it's Denis Suarez running into all this fresh air, he then just keeps running as the defenders just back away from him. Now brings it to Bryce Mendez. Crosses the ball in for Iago Aspas. It's a beautiful volley and 2-0 to Celta Vigo. Iago Aspas continues his great scoring form as now that is four goals to his name after just three matches. Not done just yet though. It's Denis Suarez passing it to Bryce Mendez. A little bit of a counter-attack here as it's Iker Losada finding himself free. The future via slash Torres all by himself. We return home to face Real Valladolid. And this wasn't necessarily a great start for us. It's Wiseman, as he just gets around Ido. Ido just not doing well to defend, and then he cuts inside. Wiseman still with the ball, and he finds the back of the net. 1-0 to Valladolid. But it's okay though, because this is Celta Vigo, and this attack has seemingly revitalized a little bit. It's Denis Suarez. He passes it back to Yakushlu. Yakushlu now to Denis Suarez. Suarez with a lovely ball to Santi Mina, and Santi Mina misses it horribly. Valladolid continue their threats on goal though. It's Guardiola to Wiseman. A little bit of a 1 2 between them. Continuing to have a 1 2 with them as finally now Wiseman frees up Guardiola. And that was just a horrible shot. Once more, Celta Vigo continue their attacks on goal. It's Denis Suarez, Luis Sinistera. Good ball to Santi Mina. Even better one to Iago Aspas. And he misses it. The spirit of Vigo will not die just yet, though. We may miss every single shot known to mankind, but at least we keep getting these opportunities. Emre Moore cuts inside, then just sees an isolated Santi Mina. And Santi Mina, if he had missed from there, I probably would have jumped off my balcony. But thank God we scored, and it's now equal. Here come Valladolid once again though, it's Alcaraz, but he's tackled, and now there could be a little bit of a quick counterattack for Celta Vigo. Santi Mina, Diago Aspas, 1-2 back to Santi Mina, and now Santi Mina waits for a run, he sees the run of Denis Suarez, Suarez then cuts, finds some space, has a shot, and what the f***? was that? Sevilla. The Europa League Kings with an opportunity in the 17th minute. It's Luke de Jong back pass to Fernando. Fernando then gets a good ball to Idrisi on the left flank. Idrisi nowhere to go as Mayo covers him pretty well. Drops it to Acuna. Back to Idrisi immediately. Delivers it in. How the hell does that even happen? Fast forward to the 70th minute, Celta Vigo trying to find something now. Iago Aspas, great ball to the newly subbed on Emre Moore as he just runs into the box. Maybe just a little too much though, as he gets tackled. Diego Carlos trying to find the pass, but then he's tackled by Fran Beltran. Beltran to Iago Aspas, a good ball to Bryce Mendez, and the mistake is capitalized on, and we find ourselves the equalizer. And we do somehow manage to escape with a point. Alright, so this is kind of new. I'm going to actually mention like where these teams are placed because I feel like that might add a little bit more relevancy to the match that we're watching right now. So anyways, 12th place, Real Sociedad. Now with Real Sociedad, 
kind of underperforming. Could we take advantage of that? But here it's Luis Sinisteta. Gets a great ball from the left back. He passes it to Santi Mina. Beautiful counter-attacking play. And it's just Iago Aspas versus the keeper. No way he's missing that one. And Celta Vigo have already found themselves a goal after just 22 minutes. Vigo continue the attacks. It's Hugo Mayo out to Iago Aspas in the midfield. Not a great idea though as he gets a pass intercepted. And now David Silva has the ball. Passes it to Porto. A great pass to Jose. And William Jose finds the back of the net. And it's one all here in the Balaidos. And just 40 minutes in, this match seems pretty intense. It's Santi Mina. A bad pass as it goes right to the defender. But then Iago Aspas reads him like a book. Intercepts it. And Iago finds himself his second goal of the match. He revitalizes the lead for us. And it's 2-1 to Celta Vigo. Just like that. Once more, Sociedad on the attack. As they try and find the equalizer again. But it's Yukushlu. Scenes of Ndidi here as he just tackles the player and now a counterattack can begin. It's Bryce Mendez, a beautiful pass to Iago Aspas. Iago Aspas with just the extra touch, but it works out in his favor. He gets himself a goddamn hat trick against Real Sociedad and we win here 3-1, another three points. And by God, that's probably the best match we've played so far. And at the end of September, here is the table. And so far, I'd say we're exceeding expectations. Six place after just six games we bounce back big time after that Real Madrid result. here's the youth academy and I'm gonna try and do something a little bit different here because I felt like the last few times I've reviewed the academy it's just been a little too time consuming we're always trying to improve the content especially in terms of entertainment and just being a little bit more concise so I'll just point out the fact that our little young Venezuelan 15 years old a left mid Rafa Ramirez 54 rated a potential of 77 to 91 the best player at this academy me so far. Fourth place, Levante. Nine minutes in, it's Levante on the attack. As they are fourth in the league, they have a bit to prove that they aren't just a simple bluff in the table. Rochina to Morales, back to Rochina on the byline, and then now he just drops it back to Morales, but what's this? That's a penalty? Levante with an early penalty attempt, it's Roger... That's your attempt? Levante, though, continue to put on the pressure. Roger, as he gets covered, passes it to Rodoya. Now to Campania. Campania to Morales. Morales then takes the shot, and it's Ruben Blanco there to save us. Vigo trying to escape the pressure that Levante keeps putting on us, but still, they just can't seem to do anything. Roger to Campania. Campania then just does his defender, has a shot, and just misses. And that is actually the rest of the match. Nothing else happened, and it's a nil-nil draw. How that was a nil-nil draw, I'll never know, but I'll take another point. Another underperforming side, 11th place Valencia. First attempts on goal and it's Celta Vigo in the 7th minute, it's headed up in the air by the defender, and then it's punched out by the keeper, but it falls right to Iago Aspas' feet, so Celta Vigo can continue the attack, brings it to Bryce Mendez, Bryce Mendez with the- Valencia with an opportunity now, and remember, nothing happened before this. Nothing. But anyways, Jason Murillo tackles the player, gets a good ball to Sinistera, a little bit of a Colombian link up there, as Sinistera just runs away from Daniel Vaz with that blistering pace, crosses in for Iago Aspas, who completely misses the net from that close. 24 minutes played, and it's Valencia again, it's Canyon Lee this time, as he just makes Manu Sanchez look like a lost child in the park, then takes the shot. <laughs> Valencia progress forward again, it's Soler to Bisuma, Bisuma now to Maxi Gomez, Gomez inches into the box, passing it back to Bisuma, with the shot, it's easily saved by Ruben Blanco, and now Ruben Blanco quickly starts up the counterattack. Hugo Mayo to Okai Yakushlu, Yakushlu then sees a lovely pass to Dennis Suarez, and somehow Suarez finds himself away from the entire back line, finds the back of the net, and somehow we find the equalizer. Valencia continue to attack though, it's Maxi Gomez receiving it from Kevin Gamero. Now Gamero receiving it back from Maxi Gomez, and it's a good save by Ruben Blanco in the end of it. Forward go O Celestes as they try and find a little bit of a chance in this counter-attack. It's Luis Sinistera receiving it from Denis Suarez, a great ball to Fran Beltran as he enters the box, stops, drops it to Yakushlu, and Yakushlu misses it. We cannot continue to squander chances guys, it's just Valencia continuing their attacks, they will find one way to 
score. I promise you that. It's Cherishev though, as Hugo Mayo covers him. Then, Cherishev finds some space away from Hugo Mayo, crosses in for Maxi Gomez, and it's a looping header over the keeper, and Maxi Gomez gives Valencia the lead back, and we get ourselves our second loss of the season. 10th place, Osasuna. Well, after that Valencia match, surely we'd have to bounce back. It's Fran Beltran, now to Dennis Suarez, a great ball to Iago Aspas. It's just beautiful, direct football, and it's 1-0 to Celta Vigo, just like that. All the way into the 75th minute now, it's Ruben Tapia. Dosada passes it to Emre Moore. Good bit of footwork to find himself to Yakushlu, and Yakushlu just drops it up to Fran Beltran, and Beltran with a beauty into the back of the net. The keeper just did not move a single muscle. 2-0 to Celta Vigo, and surely we got ourselves a little bounce back win. Well, hold your horses, because it's not done just yet. It's Osasuna with an opportunity. Avila passes it to Lopez, and now Lopez is going to find some space, cross it in for Garcia, and Ruben Garcia finds himself one back for Osasuna. Unfortunately enough for them, it's just a consolation, but fortunately for us, it's a bounce back win, and that's what you love to see. Sixth place, Via Real. This is actually sixth versus seventh. 30 minutes played, it's Emery's men on the attack, but it's Hugo Mayo with the dispossession, and a little bit of a counterattack can begin. Yes, sir. Look at that beautiful pass to Santi Mina. Just the perfect weighted ball to him, and Santi Mina is not going to make a mistake there. 1-0 to Celta Vigo, just like that. But Emery's soldiers don't give up that easily, but then again, it's Celta Vigo making another mistake, actually, as it's in Yaki Williams with some good hold-up play. Good pass to Vecino, and Vecino finds the equalizer for Villarreal. Continues to go back and forth, Jason Murillo, good ball to Luis Sinistera, again the Colombian link-up play, as he passes it to Dennis Suarez, Suarez with some space, gets a great ball in behind the defense to Sinistera, crosses it in for Santimina, Santimina makes the mistake of taking a touch for whatever reason there, when he could have just blasted into the back of the net, thank you EA Mechanics, you've done it again. The Cult of Emery continue to progress forward, it's Takafusa Kubo, as he then passes it to Chiquese, Chiquese with some space to run into, he gets closed down though, brings it to Danny Parejo, and an even better ball to Pedraza. Pedraza finds some space in behind Hugo Mayo, then drops it to Coquelin, who then crosses it in for Chiquese. It's great football from the Emory Association, and Villarreal have turned this one around. Don't count out Vigo just yet, we may have blown a couple leads and probably even more opportunities, but it's Emre Moore finding himself free, just him versus the keeper, and it's saved. It was straight at the keeper, but then another opportunity as the clearance was just terrible, falls right to Okaya Kushlu, now to Olaza, leaves it to Santimina, Santimina flips it to Bryce Mendez, a second opportunity for Emre Moore. <sighs> we really